Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we got something very special for you guys. We bought 10 different mechanical keyboards all costing under $100 ranging from $70 to $100 and we've put in some serious testing time on all 10 keyboards and after all that testing we've definitely decided we have some favorites and some not so favorites. So we're really biased in some of our reviews because our main priorities are typing feel, build quality, not switch types. Although some of them do vary switch quality for sure. So we're going to start from our least favorite and move all the way up to our most favorite. Each keyboard will eventually get their own individual in-depth review where you'll see close-ups, sound tests, uh, taking off keys, the stabilizers, looking at all of that, all of the accessories that it comes with and everything that we put in our straightforward and honest mechanical keyboard reviews. But in this video, you'll see a eagle point of view glance of each keyboard, why we like them and why we rank them the way that we rank them. So I hope you guys like this video and let's just jump straight into it. Alright, so number 10 is a full-size keyboard. It is the Corsair K70. And this is the Mark II with Cherry MX blue switches. It has full RGB lighting and a non-detachable thick cable here. So some of the reasons why we don't like this one is that it's just, it's big. It's got some interesting features that you might like, but personally for us, there's too many downsides to this one. One being that it has a very large and thick braided non-detachable cable, but also if you look at the back, it doesn't really have any wire routing management systems. And if we look here, these kickstands are one angle and they flip out horizontally which results in a lot of slipping from them although if you're typing on it flat it actually has really sturdy rubber feet here they're pretty big go all the way around there and also you need two usb ports to use this keyboard one is a USB pass-through and the other one powers the keyboard itself. So when we go into our in-depth review, you'll be looking at like the software, the different lighting effects and everything like that. If we look at build quality, only that very top strip right there is made of aluminum metal and the top plate is too. The rest of the keyboard is a plastic build. So it does have some flex and some give, but overall pretty high quality build. If we look at the keycaps, these are ABS plastic double shot keycaps. They accumulate oils really easily and it has a textured space bar here, which isn't my favorite, but it works. Um, some things that are not we're not a big fan of is that it has a non-standard bottom row here, which means that you can't just switch keycaps in and out freely. So although it has a large forehead, it does come with dedicated multimedia buttons. So we got the volume scroll wheel on the right. We have the mute button that's super easy to access. We also have these right here, the play, pause, next track, previous track. And then up here we have lighting and different profiles and macros, Windows lock too. So all very good features. If you're into gaming and you want a full size mechanical keyboard, that's pretty loud and will get the job done. This one isn't bad at all. Here's some sounds, but it's not on a table, so it may sound a little different. So for a keyboard of this price, I don't expect any ringing or pinging or things like that. But if you listen super closely and you might not be able to hear it from the video, from the microphone, but there is some echoing within the case when you press on each switch.
And then the stabilizers are cherry style. They're very loud. They don't really rattle, but they are very loud. So the space bar especially is super loud. And then we have our very not subtle branding up here. And then we have our light indicators for caps lock, scroll lock, and those things right there. It also comes with different textured keycaps for your most often used gaming keys. So yeah, QWE, ASD, and I think some of these bottom ones too. There are several, you'll have to see that in the in-depth review. I am not interested in putting them on, but they have, they're silver instead of black, so they stand out a little bit. And it also comes with a keycap puller as well. The legends are, they're a little tacky. I'm sorry if I offend anybody. I'm just not a big fan of legends that are geared towards gamers. We're not super gamers here. Also on my desk, I prefer to just have a clean and simple look rather than disco show, rather than like super gaming fonts. But overall, it's a really nice keyboard. This one, we purchased it at, I believe $100, $99 for this one. It does come with Cherry MX Blues. And as you can see here, we also have that floating keycap style design. So very nice, very easy to clean. Take off the keycaps and clean the brushed aluminum top. This is right now at number 10. The braided cable is very sturdy. It's hard to get the kinks out when you start using it. And then the USB ports are pretty guarded too. So that's number 10. I know we're in the middle of our reviews right now, but I hope you're liking this video. If you're getting any value from this video at all, smash that thumbs up button. And if you're looking forward to seeing these in-depth reviews of these mechanical keyboards, press that subscribe button and we'll jump right back into our review. Okay, next up we have keyboard number nine under $100. We bought this for under 100. I don't think that you can regularly get it for under 100. This is not a super cheap keyboard. This is a Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition. And this has the Razer Red Optical Switches. So they're Razer's new line of switches. They're very different from uh, MX style switches in the fact that each switch looks like it has a stabilizer of its own. Now, if you look at the switches themselves, still have that cherry style stem up at the top here, but each one has its own metal bar running across it. We have a lot of complaints about this thing, but first let's look at some of its upsides. So Razer has been listening to the needs of gamers out there. They put in a USB-C port right here at the back. The only problem I have with this is the recessed portion right here and not all USB cables can fit through there, although most can and will, especially the cord that comes with it. The cord that comes with this is a nice thick black braided cord with like covers on each end, which is nice. And then at the back, you see four rubber feet here and a dual angle adjustment kickstand. One angle here, and then one here, if you can see that. So very nice. This is a 10 keyless compact mechanical keyboard. No number pad, as you can see. 10 keyless is our preferred and our favorite size and form factor for a mechanical keyboard. This is because you get your navigation clusters here, you get your arrow clusters, you get your function row. I don't really need the function row. It's more of just an added bonus. And they also have here PBT keycaps that are thick and pretty heavy duty. We bought the Razer PBT keycaps in quartz pink, and these are pretty much the exact thickness and the same style as those except it comes with the keyboard. So another upside, and then the last upside is the bottom row 
is a standard bottom row. You can get keycaps from other companies and put them on this keyboard if you're looking for something a little different. And if we look at the side here, this is also a floating keycap style design like many keyboards are nowadays. And there's this very thin aluminum top plate at the top, very thin. But that means it's pretty sturdy, doesn't have any flex. The case itself is all plastic other than that aluminum top plate. This has RGB lighting and you can download the Razer Synapse software to change up all the lighting options, the macro keys, things like that. Things that you can do on the keyboard, you can adjust the brightness levels. And then at the top, it's got its secondary media keys right there on the function row. So overall, really nice first impression. However, we ranked it at number nine because of the typing experience. It is just downright terrible. And I'm sorry to all of you who like the keyboard. I love Razer. Razer was my very first mechanical keyboard. I had pretty high hopes for the keyboard since it's usually over a hundred dollars, except we got it under a hundred, which we were super lucky to, but it's just really loud and it's, it's really heavy on the joints when you're using it. So let's listen to some noise samples here. And some stabilizers. Now these are linears and they have very low actuation force. I believe that they actuate at one millimeter and actuate at 40 grams of force, which is sort of the lightest I've ever seen in a switch. So it's really easy to actuate while typing. I've accidentally hit some keys and then it registers. So that's happened. But my primary complaint is that it's just really heavy on the joints if you're typing on these for a long period of time, which we tend to do. And this is because the actuation force is so low that it's so easy to bottom out every single time that you press a switch. So after about 30 minutes, my hands were feeling pretty achy, my joints were pretty achy, and like mentally I was scared to type fast on it because I didn't want to bottom out every one of my key presses. But however, some of these problems can be fixed. If you're interested in putting a bunch of O-rings under each key, it'll make it immensely better. Right now it's very loud for a linear keyboard. If we compare this one to the HyperX Alloy Origins Core, this is also a linear switch, a red switch made by HyperX. And it sounds much more quiet. So as you can hear, the difference is huge. Especially if you're typing or gaming with this, you can hear it from across the room and into the other room too. So those are the downsides. That's why we rated it so slow, too, so low. We were disappointed with the build quality and with just the really, really thin aluminum top plate and then the sound and the feel of the switches are really disappointing too. But overall, it's a really nice keyboard and Razer is listening to what the people are telling them. They got the standard bottom row, they got the PBT keycaps, they got the USB-C detachable cable. So all in all, very nice. If you're gaming, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You're only going to be pressing a few keys. You're not going to be bouncing around with all your fingers, especially that pinky one, which is really weak. So if you're gaming, this is probably a great pick. But if you're not gaming, then I wouldn't go for this one. Okay, next one. Okay, number eight, we actually got something really cool to show you guys. It's, although it's number eight and it's not super high on our list, we still really dig the design of it. And this is, wait for it, this is the Razer Black Widow 
light with the Star Wars Stormtrooper top plate. Check that out. This keyboard is really legit looking and light is right. This keyboard is so light. It's so portable. It feels great. But unfortunately, Razer, we're still really disappointed. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so first let's look at some of the just first impressions. All right, we've got at the top here, the port. We got a micro USB detachable port here. And the braided cable that it comes with is super cool. It's alternating white and black patterns and it's very similar to the Huntsman cable except it's micro USB and it's that black and white pattern that matches with the top plate. So very nice. If we look at this, the Black Widow Lights top plate, it's thicker than the Huntsman. So the Th Huntsman one is super thin. This one's thicker as you can see from the white part here. That is all metal. The back is plastic and that's probably why it's so light. We have, of course, the four rubber feet in the back and then we have one angle adjustable kickstands, one on each side. The keyboard itself from the side is very flat. So it doesn't have any natural typing incline or natural keyboard angle at all. It's really flat. So I do use the kickstands just to give it a more comfortable feeling. And then from the side, you all saw that as well. It's got that floating keycap design. It has ABS plastic keycaps and they're very special. They're very different from the normal keycaps that you see. Let me get another keyboard. Razer Black Widow Lite keycaps, HyperX PBT keycaps. So these are much taller and thicker and these are just downright thin. So here we go. Here's the keycap and look at how thin that is. And then on this keyboard we got the Razer Orange tactile switches. They are mechanical style switches and then if you could see that there too that bulb at the top is where the light shines through. And this one only has white backlight. The Razer Huntsman did have RGB. All right, and then we have very subtle Razer branding down here. And of course we got that Stormtrooper, very awesome. Okay, so some complaints about this keyboard is the stabilizers, they are the very outdated CoStar style stabilizers, the ones with the wire that clips in and then clips into your keycaps too. So here's a quick stabilizer sound test. And a switch test. And they do come with orange O-rings in the box. They give you enough to cover your entire keyboard. As you can see, it is a 10 keyless design, compact, very light, very portable. I would like it a lot. In fact, I do like it a lot. And it's only ranked this low because of the sound that it makes. And it doesn't feel high quality. I don't know if this is because I expect a lot from Razer or I don't know, maybe my expectations were just too high for a keyboard of this price, um, but it's just not what I expected. It's just, it's, it's a little disappointing. It's very loud. And although the stabilizers aren't too bad, the design of them is just, it's not easy to fix them or replace them or even take them out and put them back. And then we also have a non-standard bottom row there. So it's not easy changing the keycaps out on this keyboard. Something that's super cool is if you're using it and your backlight is on, you can see these black stripes in the back and it sort of creates a, 
an, an illusion sort of in a way and it makes me a little dizzy but it's sort of cool it's, it's pretty cool it's got really simple legends the escape key here you got that Star Wars logo S so just really loud switches with the o-rings it's not too bad in fact here is a sound test comparing some keys with o-rings and some keys without so these have o-rings under them and these do not with without so the o-rings help immensely however people have complained that because the o-rings are orange and the backlight is white you can see the orange underneath the legends when it's shining so that can be a problem but overall not a bad keyboard at all if you're looking for portability and lightweight that tactile feel this isn't bad this one these this star wars version is a hundred dollars but the original either in black or white is 90 i believe that's the price when we bought it but it could change as always all the prices that we state in our videos are subject to change depending on when you look at them and what country you're in and things like that so this is number eight okay number seven we have a brand that we haven't looked at at all and this is the steel series apex 7 10 keyless edition it does come with a magnetic rubberized wrist rest clicks right in and this wrist rest is probably the best wrist rest that i've seen so far the corsair k70 also came with one but it was like a really cheap plastic one that didn't really do anything so it's not really worth showing but you'll see that in the in-depth review of that keyboard as well this one is very nice at the back it's got six rubber feet and it's magnetic and it clicks right in we also have a very subtle shiny black branding right there okay some special things to note about this keyboard is that it's got a scroll wheel here a button here and an oled display right here that you've probably never seen in any other keyboard this one has the steel series red linear switches and i think their steel series is proprietary switch that they make themselves or that they order some other company to make but they're steel series branded so a few things here we have a non-detachable really thick heavy duty cable and as you can see it's got some wire routing things you can go you can go this way you can go here for the middle you can go all the way here for the left side and then it does have two kickstands and they're completely rubberized so very nice rubber one two three four we have three rubber feet but then the bottom of the kickstands are also rubber so and all together five rubber feet it's got two usb ports so you need two and it does have usb pass through too and that usb port is on the top left side along with their subtle branding right here and then subtle branding right here good for you steel series not needing to advertise yourself and then here look at this switch right here this keycap also has the steel series logo on it and as you can see it is a standard layout which is super awesome it's got abs plastic keycaps cherry style stabilizers here's a quick stabilizer sound test The Steel Series Linears sound test. All right, so let's talk about the OLED display. You can download the Steel Re Steel Series software, 
and then attach apps and different games into here such as Discord and CSGO and it'll tell you some things but also some really cool things with this is that you can change the lighting settings, you can change the brightness, you can adjust your media keys all with this. I believe this is volume and then you press it for pause and you press it for play but if you hold it I think that goes to the next track. I will have to look at that again but you can do a whole bunch of things with just this and because it has this this keyboard only has 84 keys instead of 87 so like other 10 keyless keyboards will have that screen scroll lock pause and then the print screen button so this one doesn't have that and I don't know how many of you guys use that but if you're gonna miss that then this this doesn't have that I never use those so not a big deal but overall it's a pretty high quality keyboard but the reason that it is still pretty low in the ranking is because it has that just really thick non-detachable cable that I just can't stand. It's super lightweight, it's a nice build. The wire routing is not bad, although it's pretty, pretty easy for the wire to get out of its space if you're handling it a little roughly. And then I'm not a big fan of linears, but these linears are not bad at all. They're relatively quiet. Stabilizers are pretty decent as well. This one and the Huntsman, I'd pick this one over that one any day. It just sounds better. It feels better. And it's got the cool screen. Who doesn't want the cool screen? And it's got the wrist rest. The wrist rest is really good. It's more of a palm rest because your wrist doesn't rest on it, but it's more this area where your carpal bones are, which is even better. Better for you, better for your joints. Coming up, number six, we've got a brand that we haven't touched too often, but we're really interested in exploring more and more of their products, especially their pro lineup, which I hope we'll get to explore coming soon this year when all this is better. We have the Logitech G512 mechanical keyboard and this has the GX brown switches which are Logitech's. They've been coming up with more and more of their own switches. So they have their GX switches and then they have their GL switches which I believe is their low profile uh, lineup and then they have their Pro X switches which is their gaming lineup that fits into their hot swappable Logitech G Pro X mechanical keyboard. But we got one here and this one we bought right at $100. So looks pretty clean. Out of the box you can already see we have yet another non-detachable cable here. And this one also has USB pass-through. It needs two USB ports to put into your computer and it's a thick braided cable. If we look at the back, it has zero cable routing systems. I'm really not sure what this is for or this because this, like these things don't fit in there. This is too big. And then we have this little screw in, which I'm not sure what that is for either. I did look it up and I think that Logitech wanted to do something with that in its early days but they scrapped the project and now they're still using the same chassis, chassis, whatever um, for their build. Okay, so this does have a floating keycap style design as well. If you look at the top here we have their brushed aluminum, brushed anodized aluminum top plate in this nice base gray color and it does look nice. The light bounces off it super nicely. And then we have our six rubber feet on the bottom. We have kickstands and they are horizontal flipping. Not a big fan of, but it works. The keyboard itself has a very slight incline. Have this higher side on this side and lower side on that side but it's very, very slight. Okay, and it's got ABS plastic keycaps with a matte black coating. 
It does not have a standard bottom row, which is unfortunate, but it's okay. It does have RGB lighting, so these are double shot keycaps. And now for a quick stabilizer sound test. And the GX Browns. So the GX Browns sound really nice. They're very similar to Cherry MX Browns, no complaints there. The stabilizers are a little bit loud. They are Cherry style stabilizers, especially that space bar. It's pretty loud. It's got secondary media keys on that top function row. It has its indicators for caps lock on the right side there. It's got that full number pad. And the legends are actually quite simple when you see them and I'll just include some b-roll here and there of the legends and the lights and all of that so very nice keyboard overall okay so the GX the GX switches are actually just kale browns that are rebranded into Logitech's GX brown switches if you look at the switches themselves you can see the kale branding right on it. Kale browns, which are nice. Kales are very nice switches in my opinion. I absolutely love them. And then you can download the Logitech firmware to edit these keys, the macros, the lighting, all of that. So overall, very nice build, no flex. I really dig the aluminum top plate, although the rest of the keyboard is plastic. It just looks so nice and so fancy. One downside is the non-detachable cable and the no wire routing, but the overall feel of the keyboard is quite nice. There's no ringing, there's no pinging, and it speaks quality to me for about $100. Okay, okay. We're halfway done. So coming in at number five, is probably something that you guys haven't looked up often or expected to see but we have the Keychron K2. Now Keychron isn't a super popular mechanical keyboard brand such as Razer, Logitech, or Corsair, or SteelSeries, or any of those brands because they're really not focused towards the whole gamer crowd and all of their Keyboards have a really unique layout. So this one is a 75% layout. We got ours with RGB and with the Gateron Reds, which are linear switches. They're pretty much cherry red lookalikes. And it's relatively quiet. Now this keyboard is making it to the fifth spot because of its features, not necessarily because we love it that much in terms of the feel. As for build quality, it does pretty good. So let's just look at the case really quickly. We have that strange 75% layout. So what that means is, so 10 keyless is basically 80-ish percent. Now this is 75%, which means we're taking some of those keys away. So primarily we're taking that top, those top three buttons, and then we're taking away some of the navigational cluster buttons. Now if you look closely, there are some things that you should know about this layout. We have the right shift here, and it's smaller than the right shifts on most keyboards. We have our arrow cluster here at the bottom that really takes encroaches into the space of that right shift. Now if we also look at this bottom row, all of these keys are about the same size. Not all of them, only the ones on the right side are about the same size. Actually they are the same size as the alphanumeric keys. We also have that function row right here. So without that function row, this would pretty much be a 65% keyboard. But we have that function row, so it looks a little bit awkward because the height of the keyboard is really high. Okay, now let's talk about the K2 in particular. At the back here, we have its rubber feet. 
we have its kickstands. And then at the left side here, this is what makes the keyboard really special. It's easy to flip from Windows to Mac mode via just a flip of the switch. And also it comes with specialized keycaps just for Windows and then just for Mac. So super easy to switch between the two. And then this keyboard also has Bluetooth wireless features. Also super easy to use here. You'll just scroll it to Bluetooth and then you can scan for it by, it took me a while to figure this out. Then you press FN and then you hold either one, two, or three to get it to connect. But I'll have to look at that again and you'll see it connect to my phone during the in-depth review that we'll be doing. And if you want to use uh, the wired mode, you have to move the switch to cable. So the, the three modes are Bluetooth, off, and cable. So, and that's where you can connect it via a detachable USB-C cable here on the side. It is a little awkward that it's on the side, but primarily this is supposed to be used as a wireless keyboard. It's fairly portable. It's really sturdy. It's got that aluminum back plate that you can't really see, but main gripes about this keyboard if you look at it from a side angle, this thing is a brick. It's a block, blocky brick that just sits on your table. It's entirely flat here. And the height from the front is the same as the height from the back. So not great for wrist positioning, not right for typing experience. And then if you look at the keycaps here up top, it doesn't exactly have a nice curve or a nice incline or anything like that. So it's not easy to type on and it does hurt your wrists and your joints after a while too. This one has RGB lighting and it comes with, I believe, 15 preset effects that you can mess with. Secondary, uh, secondary media functions up on the top. And we have this orange escape key, but they also provide you with a gray one in case you don't want that little pop on your desk. All right, so some things you need to know is that it has N key rollover only in wired mode. In wireless mode, that is not the case. So don't be gaming in wireless mode, which you all should know anyways, that if you're gaming in wireless mode, it tends to be slower and it tends to lag and performance just isn't as good. Okay, so quick sound test. If you're interested in seeing the full typing test and full sound test keyboard on table, kind of tests, then you'll have to wait for the in-depth reviews, but once those are out, we'll link them all in a playlist down below. So be sure to check those out if you're interested in any one of these keyboards. Let's go. Spacebar. So the Gateron Reds feel pretty good to type on. One of my main problems with this keyboard with typing is that when I press the right shift key, I tend to go over too far and press that up arrow. And that happens to me sometimes, which is really annoying. Um, and then another problem that I have is that the delete key here is on here instead of being here. So I, I tend to miss that a lot. I wish they just swapped out places, but overall, it's not a bad keyboard. I definitely have my complaints about it, but the reason that it's in fifth place is that it has a multitude of features and those are RGB lighting, Bluetooth, up to three devices, detachable USB-C cable, and that unique 70 5% layout that you don't really see other keyboards have nowadays. So it is very compact. So this is 75% and then this is 10 keyless. So as you can see, you get, you're getting a lot of the same functions and the same keys, but you're taking up so much less space. Did I mention it had ABS plastic keycaps? Because it does. All right, we're getting 
close to the end. Number four, right here. So another brand of keyboard that you probably never heard of in your life. But let me tell you some things about this keyboard before I tell you what it is. It's got Cherry MX blue switches. It's got PBT keycaps. And it even comes with some nice red or blue keycaps that you can mod your escape key and arrow keys with. We decided to mix it up a little bit just to have a little fun. But this is the IKBC CD87 mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Blue switches. Now I think on this channel we haven't experienced Cherry MX Blues at all. So let's just start with that quick sound test. Stabilizers. Switches. All right, so as you can hear, the Cherry MX Blues are super crispy and very clean clicks very nice clicks i gotta say compared to the old razor black widow 2014 these clicks are way superior and they make me feel like i can go back to a clicky keyboard and maybe not hate my life so it's probably part of why this keyboard is in our top four it is a beast of a build this thing is heavy it is sturdy it's got a plastic case with a metal back plate, super sturdy, pretty heavy to work with. And then, this is not good, I know it's not good. Main gripe is that another non-detachable USB cable, and this one is, the cable's pretty thin, it's nothing special. At the back here, we do have some routing, so we can go straight, we can go left, or we can go right, and then it does have its dual angle kickstands too so top one is less and the bottom one is more and we got our four rubber feet so the usual pretty much this is a 10 keyless design it comes with five of these blue keycaps and five of these red keycaps and a switch puller that looks pretty cute pretty cute switch puller and these are die sub pbt keycaps Legends are very clean, very mature and adult-like. They are die subs, so they're less likely to just wear off over time. They're more likely to stay there. And I like it. The, the keycaps are all standard, so you can replace them as you want. We have our indicators here at the top. A little strange place to put your indicators, but no big deal. Not too big of a deal if you're not using those too often. Okay, so this keyboard is, it was about $75 when we bought it. So out of all the keyboards that we have, this one is the cheapest one, but it doesn't feel cheap. It's actually really high quality. And the logo, the subtle branding here, is right there on the space bar. That's pretty much all you get as for branding. And then as for legends, all of these numeric, alphanumeric keys are left aligned. So if, if that's a big deal for you, then maybe it could be a deal breaker for me. It's not too big of a problem at all. And then it does have secondary media keys at the top here, although they're unmarked, so you'll just have to go and figure them out. But don't worry, we'll figure them out for you in our in-depth review coming soon within the next two months. A lot of content coming out within the next two months. I'm super excited. I hope you're super excited. But this is just a high quality build and it's the cheapest one. It's sturdy. It's got PBT keycaps. It's got Cherry MX switches and it sounds really great. Stabilizers have no rattle, although they are a little bit loud. But overall, only complaint about this keyboard is the non-detachable cable. Let's move on. Oh, let's look at the side first. It's got a pretty natural incline. 
The front isn't too high and then it doesn't have floating style keycaps. So great build. All right, number three, this is another strange keyboard. Number three, we got the Vortex Gear Cypher 65% keyboard. It's different, unique layout, very compact. Here's 65% and then here's 10 keyless. As you can see, very compact, very small. Can hold it with one hand, no problem at all. So let's talk layout first. 65%, you get the arrow clusters down here, but you also get some of the navigational keys here. Primary downside of this keyboard is there's no delete key. Like just what, why did you take away the delete key, but you put in the home, doesn't make sense. To access the delete key, I believe it's FN apostrophe or something like that. It's different and it's just different. You don't really know where any of this, the second layer keys are. On the Amazon page though, it does tell you like how do you access certain things and how do you like access the, the, the media keys and things like that. You primarily do it using FN and then pressing some of those other buttons. So let's see, there's no function row. The top row you get are the numbers and then you get all your other stuff. So to access that function row, you gotta press FN and then the numbers. At the back, there are no kickstands, only rubber feet. That's the downside, it does have a detachable USB-C port as you can see right here on the top left and this one has Cherry MX clears so they're like browns except they're a lot heavier to work with quick sound test and then the switches So sounds great, feels great. Stabilizers are really quiet, really nice. Like the 75% keyboard, the 65% keyboard also has the small right shift. So it could be easy to accidentally press that up button, which I've done very many times. Now it does have a natural angle, natural incline here, and a little bit of a curve. So it's not too bad that doesn't have the kickstand. I wouldn't use the kickstand anyways. But the front is sort of high, as you can see. So over time, yeah, it could get tiring to type on. Very sturdy build, like a brick. Not as heavy as the IKBC CD87, but pretty solid. Got that aluminum backplate and then the all plastic build around it. No RGB lighting, but for us, it's not really about the lighting. It's about the overall feel, the build quality, and the experience. Two more to go. So a disclaimer about the top two is that I have differing opinions. My husband has differing opinions. We all, we have our preferences. So that's, that's why it's hard to make some of these ranking videos is that we all have different preferences and the way that we rank them is based on what we value in a mechanical keyboard. So to some people, maybe RGB does matter a lot and then our rankings are just all out of whack. But in the end, it's really up to the person using it, the person buying it to really make that personal decision according to their preferences. So in my opinion, this next one is my number one. And this is, we'll, we'll rank this as number two, but this is the Durgod Taurus K320TKL. And we'll be doing an in-depth review of this super soon. So be on the lookout for that. Press that subscribe button. But this is a really nice mechanical keyboard for $100. It's super sturdy. Let's look at the back first. Okay, here's the back. It's got the rubber feet, five rubber feet here, a detachable USB-C cable that can either go up, it can go right, it can go left, and then the kickstands, it's got 
two angles, one and two. So really easy to use. One problem I have with this cable routing system is that this this little small spot doesn't fit all USB-C cables, which gets a little annoying. The one that comes with it does fit. And then sometimes when you route to a certain side and you lift up your keyboard, the wire just falls right out. So that's not too convenient. But if you look at the case, it is a nice space gray color. This keyboard comes in different colorways, so you can get it in white, get it in gray and you can get it in like a blue kind of mixed colors thing. It also comes with different switch types. So this one that we have comes with Cherry MX Browns which are really nice to type on. It's a super sturdy build. On the front right side, you see the branding here, Durgod. It is a 10 keyless design. The keycaps are PBT and you get a mix of the dark gray and the light gray. It's got secondary media functions all right there. And it is, it doesn't have RGB, so that's not a problem for me, maybe a problem for you. The main thing that I really like about this keyboard is the experience. So here's the stabilizers. And here are the sounds. So super smooth to type on. Very nice sounds, really nice stabilizers. I believe they're already lubed. And if they're not, you can always lube them yourself. Really quick, really easy. Legends are really clean. really simple and overall there's just very few complaints that I have about this keyboard. You can always change up the keycaps. It already has a natural typing angle and like a, a curve to it which makes it really nice too. Yeah there's just there's few complaints. It's a hundred dollars. Only complaint is that the cable is hard to route and some cables may not fit into it. As we move farther up into these rankings, it's like there's less and less to say because there's just not much to complain about. It's, it's just nice. Okay, number one, we've talked about this a ton of times before. We've already done an in-depth review on this specific mechanical keyboard. This is the HyperX Alloy Origins Core with HyperX Reds. We have pre-ordered this exact same keyboard with their new Aqua switches, so be on the lookout for that. Press that subscribe button. And we've replaced the original keycaps, which were ABS plastic and black and matte and accumulated some gross grime stuff with the HyperX pudding keycaps that are PBT and has just really nice shine through in white. RGB lighting on this looks absolutely amazing. And we've done an in-depth review on this before, so let's just go over some of the features really quick and why we love it so much. It is full aluminum, front plate, back plate, just really solid, sturdy build. At the back, we have our rubber feet, and then we have our dual angle adjustment kickstands. We have a detachable USB-C port here. One problem about this is that it's sort of in a bunch so that not all USB-C cables fit in this either. We have really subtle HyperX branding right here. Not sure if you can even see it because it's so subtle. And the switches are linear, so they're really nice to type on. They're really quiet. You can always put on O-rings if you want. And stabilizers. So the stabilizers can be a little bit loud, but the linears themselves feel very nice to type on. It does have full RGB lighting and their firmware, their Ingenuity software 
is super easy to use. It can store up to three color profiles that you can switch between on the fly within the onboard memory. Yeah, there's just, there's few complaints. It is a nice keyboard. It's 10 keyless. I know we're super biased. All of our top keyboards are not full size. There's just, there's just too many downsides with full size keyboards. And I think part of why we didn't like them is because they're just not high quality. All right, so those are our top 10 mechanical keyboards under $100. I know this was a super long video, but I'll link up all of the in-depth reviews in a playlist down below. If you're interested, check them out. Uh, and then I'll link to all of our products that we've showed in this video as well if you're interested in checking that out. But for the playlist, I'll link it here. And then for another video by us, I'll link that here. But subscribe here if you want to. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments on whatever keyboard we should review in the future, we'll add it to the list. Our list is getting pretty big. So see you in the next.